since last time, what we've been doing is to explore some of the possibilities and how the technology could be used. And one of the uh, things that we were quite keen was to kind of uh, position uh, the technology, which is basically using the brain culture, um, into a domestic setup. So the idea was to develop um, some sort of interactive uh, device which allows you to uh, directly uh, interact with the cell culture from a domestic environment which is linked to a lab. We focus on an imagery which was the idea of a microscope using something which is familiar to a lab environment but bringing that language and just transform it and adapt it to a domestic environment. So what we came up with was something called the neuroscope which is actually the idea of looking into neurons, into uh, brain cells. When you look into it, you will be able to see this virtual representation, um, which is uh, happening in real time because the object is networked to the cell culture in the lab. And uh, through a control panel, which will be positioned here, think of, of a joystick, if you like. Uh, you will be able to interact um, with this virtual environment and as you interact with this virtual environment you will be sending signals to the cell culture which then will feed back into your virtual environment so there is a loop uh, between uh, what you do in, in real time with your neuroscope and the cell culture. Uh, this is for example is one of the initial sketch uh, developed together with Mark Hammond who is the neuroscientist working on the project in order to understand how to represent the cell culture in, uh, in the virtual environment. First of all, to develop something which is meaningfully uh, in terms of behaviors, but also visually to develop something which has a visual, you know, sort of meaningful relationship with the cell culture. Here is a, there's another one, for example, where I remember this uh, Mark trying to explain to me what happens when the cell uh, fires and what, you know, you have this sort of a series of branching, things branching out and how the different cells are linked together or networks are the linked together and the spikes which are when the, you know, the cell culture fires. Here, this is just you know, the actual body of the object. Here there will be a screen and this screening will be wired to the power, the, the network and the joystick and so on. And this screen then is linked to a computer which is linked to the cell culture. Uh, what you're looking at at the moment is just a kind of very crude representation of what's happening in the cell culture, but this one is not yet done with live data. This is something we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. You can see that what we decided was rather than representing the cells individually, which will be not um, a meaningful representation because you don't really know where the cells are in the petri dish, what we're representing here is the grid of arrays, which is basically the electrodes. And when there is a, a cell or a network of cells which uh, fires and fires, uh, what happens is this is of course is detected by an array or a specific electrode. When you those you see those uh, one of those dots with the pink circle around, it means that's when uh, there is an activity going on. And then by firing, something else will happen, and uh, and those connections appear to through time. And as you can see, there is this sort of um, web which is uh, literally like a map of what's going on in the cell culture and the idea with the neuroscope is with the joystick having a cursor which interferes with some of those areas and by interfering with it almost like m m massaging one of those areas you send signals back you stimulate the culture again and uh, by doing that you hopefully there will be behaviors which will emerge which then feed back into the virtual representation I think it's been a very successful collaboration simply because there's been a kind of a constant dialogue between the group at Reading, the scientists and, um, and myself. And it's something that which has evolved through time and also the willingness to actually to try to implement the technology and to use it rather than just engaging with, with that work in, on an intellectual level. So the idea actually to produce something which is a working prototype in itself and that's what has been a you know, uh, fantastic learning experience for me, to have a much more hands-on you know, approach by using the technology and implementing that into my design work.